I will discuss about just introductory part of convex optimization. And so what is the outline? So outline is first I will talk about the motivation behind this course, why we are going to discuss about this course and what is the utilization of this course and how we will implement. After what I will discuss about uh, one interesting optimization problem and there it involves three things. One we call it motivation, another we call it intuition. So why intuition we are calling it? So if you are having any kind of problem, if you are able to see the intuition, so your only task would be to convert that intuition into some algorithm so that you can solve that problem in, in machine. So that's why I'm talking about uh, uh, one optimization problem, intuition to algorithm journey I will talk uh, again. <laughs> you will see various other problem in the course as well then i will talk about course goal what is the course goal and what you will achieve in this course then i will talk about how course will be organized and i will talk about further readings so what 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 would be the courses and what would be the uh, related courses and uh, books and other things references other i i will discuss okay so coming to motivation part of uh, any mathematics course that computational mathematics course there happens to be four aspect uh, in order to why we are calling it uh, computational mathematics because it is talking about uh, modeling of a real world problem try to model a problem into mathematical framework and that there you try to see four aspect what are those aspect first aspect that uh, once you are having a model then it deal with some model structure. So model structure simplest approach is that you come up with the parametric approach. So you have to estimate the parameter of that model. What does it mean? Estimation here, again, it is an optimization, but we have to get among the various uh, model, we have to get the optimal model. That we have to, we have to get the optimal parameter. So uh, what is the journey? How we can get optimal parameter? We can get it through some specific numerical methods. So that like Newton's method, like gradient descent and various other things you will see it later. Those happens to be optimization technique, but has been derived from some numerical methods. So that journey I will talk about to get optimal parameter. Okay, once you are having optimal parameter, then what you will do with that? So you try to infer about that uh, model. Once you are having optimal parameter, you that probabilistic picture will come and you have to infer about uh, what uh, with respect to real world problem, you have to infer about what are the implementation and how what is meaning of that optimal model, how we can uh, apply, how we can implement to solve a problem. So such things would come. So that's why I discuss about there are four aspects of any mathematical model. So we can see all those pictures I have given it here. Later, what if you come in this course, it is all about optimization, but in very a specific framework, convex optimization. So convexity is playing very important role in uh, modern optimization. Like it has divided the opti all the optimization problem in two framework. One is convex, another one is non-convex. So convexity is simply it says that easy one, easily easy. That means, but it is not simply. Uh, uh, that uh, once you are having a problem optimization problem it is not simply easy you have to convert that problem into convex then you will see it is a very easy one and then uh, smartly you have to apply optimization algorithm and to get the solution so simply i would like to again say that when you are having convexity in mind it simply say, say that uh, complexity of the problem has been lowered down in fact, the uh, what we call it, what Rockefeller, he is the famous person who introduced convex optimization. So he just uh, discuss about that. Uh, if you talk about any optimizer problem, uh, classification is between convexity and non-convexity. Even problem is non-convex. There is a duality theory in this course will come that would try to convert that problem into convex problem. So duality theory is also coming. All those are geometric. So once I, when I'm saying geometric means you can visualize that intuitively you can visualize this so that is meaning of uh, convexity and meaning of convexity then uh, marvelous things come from namaraski and yudin they came up with various algorithm uh, various algorithm and the one true algorithm that interior point method what we are talking about in today's scenario and thanks to this karmakar he came up with that idea during uh, his working period in bell lab and <laughs> You will see how to solve a various a very specific kind of problem that we call it semi-definite program. Okay, with the help of integer one method, thanks to that Karmakar. That also we'll discuss in there. That one is simply one algorithm. And once I am saying algorithm, it has been translated uh, uh, from some numerical method. So that we will see it. 
and if you talk about uh, further uh, that uh, uh, contribution it is directly coming as a convex programming introduced by or summarized by Nastro and Namraski. So you can see various uh, recent work by Nastro and Namraski. It is helping to solve various machine learning problem like uh, uh, it is help uh, uh, mostly uh, uh, you might have already seen gradient descent then uh, Adams then Ada grade and various things are coming. So here if you talk about uh, acceleration of those uh, algorithm those are coming thanks to natural that natural uh, acceleration approach or momentum approach adaptive approach various things are coming so it is one kind of convex programming uh, is now a very interesting to solve a problem in computer you will see that all those things you will see in this code now i am taking one interesting example there are various examples simple I, in, in today's life people are just uh, running behind machine learning machine learning a lot so here machine learning if you talk about what is the core inside the machine learning actually optimization but uh, as i mentioned that machine learning is not directly an optimization problem you have to smartly convert that machine learning problem into a optimization problem and that would be that we will call it training problem that means we are training a machine learning algorithm so when you do perform training actually you are performing optimization so that's way uh, that conversion is really interesting so that one conversion i am talking it like this way simply i would like to say that uh, machine learning it acts indirectly it is not acting directly directly means it is not direct optimization problem so what is happening that uh, we have to care about while in the machine learning performance we have to care about performance index some kind of performance measure with respect to test data with test data test data and generally that performance index happens to be unknown uh, if it is unknown then how we can uh, optimize that performance index it would be definitely intractable that means it is not doable simply in that process so that's where we go for approximation so what we do in place of uh, that uh, um, optimizing performance index we come up with a uh, alternative things that we call it cost function so by reducing the cost function is equivalent to improve the performance so we will see that it is very much related just to focus on the cost function and try to reduce it or that means try to minimize it and in that process you will see that you are adjusting the or improving the performance and if you talk about what is the cost function so cost function is simply it is expected loss we define it like this way so expected loss you can define if you talk about generic definition it is coming like this way okay it is coming like this way but here uh, what is happening that simplest expected loss we call it average we can define it by average that means just we are introducing distribution here this di actually data is coming from some distribution and just at, at our hand we are having data but we don't know from which distribution data has been generated so what is happening that simplest approach happens to be uh, we try to come up with some empirical distribution for uh, that existing data and simplest one happens to be uniform distribution so that's what you if you are applying uniform distribution it it is turned this uh, expected loss is turned into just average average low average loss okay so that is the scenario so you need you need to know all these terms so it is just a what we call it it is a function now it has been turned into an uh, so what scenario we see that uh, i'm saying that it is just expected loss and uh, here we introduce empirical distribution that's why we can call it empirical risk okay and uh, uh, by uh, minimizing this one uh, we say that we are having a training problem and what is training problem it is just an optimization problem it is just an optimization problem so if you talk about machine learning uh, problem that it is talking about improving performance measure so it is totally what it is very implicit kind of thing we are unable to view that so we have converted that into explicit form what is that now this machine learning problem has been converted into a training problem and this one is an optimization problem it is doable it is it is doable that means training problem is just equivalent to optimization problem same scenario you can put there in control problem or system identification problem only approach would change but overall things would be same that means you are trying to convert into training problem so if i if you ask me what are those terms involved in the in this uh, expected loss or you call it empirical risk so you can simply see that l that it represent a uh, per example loss with respect to each uh, example or training example you can introduce some kind of loss it would be l2 loss l2 uh, depends upon uh, 
l1 l2 different different loss just it is one kind of uh, distance what we call, call it distance between uh, predicted output and actual output that that we call it loss so it depends upon your approach what kind of uh, it is loss means it is de defined by some kind of metric so what kind of metric you you come up with so here we are calling it f in this function f happens to be unknown to us and it is totally depends on our expertise how to come up with uh, one explicit form of this uh, function we call it uh, that that one is coming in model structure situation so if we hear what is unknown here x is our data given data input input data okay it would be known to you and y is the output data that would be also known to you what is known that we don't know the structure of the function okay that to output function what would be that so we come up with the parametric approach theta theta is unknown here so once we try to estimate the optimal value of theta that would give that would give an optimal model and that would be uh, what very useful for prediction purpose or estimation purpose or detection purpose various things would come depend upon one what scenario is there and here as i mentioned that it is just uh, empirical distribution we can learn it uh, directly from the data itself simplest distribution happens to be uh, uniform distribution everyone know that how easy to define uniform distribution okay now this one was the uh, motivation now i will take one optimization problem and how we can solve this solution process will continue throughout this course when whenever we will see uh, optimization problem okay so suppose we are having a problem that we need to minimize a function uh, okay over certain domain so simplest approach what we have to do we have to see the geometry what does it say so suppose we are having function function of two variable f of x and we are trying to minimize that function over the uh, uh, domain rn complete domain rn okay so if you try to uh, see the fun just try to plot the function uh, if you are uh, having explicit function you need to plot it this one is the surface plot our simplest one is you can go for contour plot this one is the contour plots so or all plotting you can see all these plotting is very simple to done so i am taking here uh, all these for motivation perspective if you are taking function of one variable it is just mixture of three negative gaussian uh, so what is happening that uh, here from here how we can uh, minimize this function so in the process of minimization of this function uh, it is what minimization means we are have we have to perform where we see uh, minimum value in the neighborhood of a point so we will see at this point minimum value is there at this point minimum value is there at this point minimum value is there so all these are local minimum so what does it all this say that if you start from anywhere so suppose you are starting from anywhere in order to get minimum value you have to start downward journey downhill journey so it is not this problem it says that you have to start a downhill journey so your question will come so who will say that i will start down downhill journey which will provide the search direction to proceed in the downhill journey the gradient will provide here so simplest gradient is vanishing at the local minima we know that uh, from calculus uh, we are very much aware of that but the search direction will be provided by gradient okay it is the slope direction also you can say it like this way so what is happening that our ultimate aim to find a point where gradient is vanishing so that would be local minima that we are, we are trying to find those point where gradient is vanishing by downhill journey okay so so uh, we have to start from anywhere and try to find that so what is happening that in the process of that many pro is internal issue will come so what are those we will see there are there are certain point where concavity is changing concavity if you talk about concavity it can be measured by hessian or second der derivative or curvature simply curvature it is very much related to that if there is a point where curvature is changing then the, at that point also gradient is zero but that can't be a local minima that can't okay so we have, we have to bypass that as well so bypassing also can be done through one interesting algorithm that we call it line search algorithm there are uh, various line search algorithm and you will see all those things here in in the uh, optimization process as well okay so if you what is happening that uh, main issue here in in order to solve a optimization problem is that initialization so if you initialize from anywhere definitely you will face problem uh, it will uh, stuck somewhere so what are the process of initialization where there are various initialization so one of that random initialization so randomly we pick a point under certain probabilistic law and that will talk about that uh, your that 
gradient descent or, or your method will converge to oh, very near to optimal point very near to i'm not saying saying that exactly at the optimal point it will converge to very near uh, optimal point so if you leave it to that point then definitely it will take uh, exponential time you have to control that so what are those things so if you put a convexity picture over the function suppose this function is convex so if you are taking this uh, convex means this bowl shape simply we say that this one this one is a convex function so if you are taking a function which happens to be convex in nature that means the loss function or cost function happens to be convex in nature most gen function generally most of the function except neural network in most of the learning problem you will see convex uh, uh, criterion function or cost function okay so if you put this kind of condition then it says that uh, if you are start from any point in polynomial time it you will converge to optimal point in polynomial time okay so that is the very uh, that is very interesting in convex optimization problem so here uh, further i will talk about uh, algorithm so so as i mentioned that how we have to come up with algorithm so we have to apply some kind of uh, numerical techniques so simplest one is that in, in the process of applying what is meaning of applying numerical technique it is just equivalent to say that if you are having a function then if you are applying numerical technique with respect to gradients situation then we try to approximate the function by some uh, tailor approximation like quadratic or like cubic depends upon what scenario is there so we are suppose we are having this function f of x and we are minimizing this function okay we are trying to minimize this function so what will happen is that so in place of minimizing this, this function we come up with a quadratic approximation of this function at x remember that this x is uh, any point any arbitrary point we don't know it's a, or simply you can say that initialization point also okay it it may be in optimal point may not be so it, it is just an arbitrary point so we are taking a or simply you say that just one initialization point and we try to at that initialization point we try to approximate the function uh, by a quadratic approximation it is just a taylor uh, it is directly coming from uh, Taylor approximation, second quality approximation, what we call it. Okay, so if you simply so in place of minimizing this function f, we are trying to minimize this function. So you know everyone that how to minimize this function. It is just a quadratic function. So find the derivative of this function or gradient of this function and equate to zero. So if you are doing that, so minimize. So that means. Uh, uh, what is happening that if you find the gradient of this one and equate to zero, we are getting it that y equal to x minus alpha time gradient of f of x. Okay, f at x. So x is the current point. You can say that uh, y is the next update. Y is the next up update. So you can see that minimizing of this one is just equivalent to find a point y, which is just what next update of x. X is the current point, and through x we went to y through this update rule this we call it update rule and we can put it in very great uh, what uh, explicit gradient descent notion it is like that if what we do uh, we got a direction if suppose we are here at x and from x uh, we got a so x suppose in 2d you are at point x this is the current point in uh, and if you talk about you try to go uh, away from x in order to minimize the function there are various directions infinitely many directions so which direction you have to choose so you got the direction of descent by uh, the gradient negative of gradient is giving direction of descent okay then your next question would be here how much you have to move in that direction so that means alpha amount alpha the uh, scalar quantity the alpha amount we have to move in that negative of gradient okay uh, so that that alpha we are calling it a step size so situation is coming like that this gradient update you can say that if you are talking about xk is the current point xk plus one would be the uh, just next update okay so here we are having several terms you can say that alpha we are calling it a step size that means how much you go proceed in the negative direction of gradient then you can call it uh, simply this algorithm is gradient descent what we call it so if you try to put that in algorithm framework it is coming like this way you are start from any initialization point x not x not mode be maybe any point depends upon your choice what uh, uh, would be initialization point so that we call it current point and you have to keep on updating this uh, until uh, this uh, stopping criteria is satisfied that means uh, you come up with one accuracy if silent and you say that norm of the gradient should be less than equal to this if silent if norm of the gradient happens to be greater than this one we have to keep on updating if it falls behind if silent we don't we have to, we have to stop that is the stopping criteria what
what we say that okay and uh, we have to satisfy we have to update this until this uh, this this stopping criteria is satisfied so i am taking one example here so simply if you try to see see that here in the derivation of algorithm you will see that uh, that's where i discuss if you want epsilon accuracy epsilon means 0 0.001 or 0 0.01 depends upon your choice of my, uh, that means how much uh, 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 that means uh, how much uh, how near you want to uh, arrive near to optimal point so uh, that that is that is the epsilon so if you are simply you say that epsilon near to a optimal point so then how many iteration you have to perform one by epsilon order epsilon iteration you have to perform one by epsilon order just it is a linear linear term is coming simply here so here we can take one example i have taken a simple quadratic function so if you are taking quadratic function what is the approach that first we have to find the gradient very easy to find the gradient of this given function okay after that what we have to do uh, we have to come up with some accuracy of your desire what accuracy you want to uh, proceed with so here accuracy that if silent we have taken 10 to the power minus 5 okay uh, this up to this accuracy we have to arrive near to optimal point so next question would be how many iteration it will take it will take uh, 10,000 iteration it will take 10,000 iteration due to asymmetric nature of this quadratic uh, function asymmetric nature we can further do a lot of things to improve this uh, uh, technique okay so that i will talk uh, just in next slides i will talk so you can here so why in that last problem uh, the number of iteration was 10,000. It was it was due to ill conditioning nature of the problem. The quadratic quadratic function is very nice. It is differentiable and uh, easy to find a gradient. Everything is was nice. But problem was with uh, the geometry of that function. But it was ill conditioned. What does it mean? That if you try to find Hessian of the Hessian Hessian measure the curvature of that function. So Hessian happens to be very big. So if you are taking a function like this way, this quadratic function, and if you try to find Hessian, Hessian would be uh, it is a positive definite uh, you will uh, it is just a matrix two by two matrix it, it is a function of two variables so you will get two by two matrix by finding all second order partial derivative and you will get to a so the hessian measure the uh, what we call it uh, ill conditioning so how we have to get over that ill conditioning nature so here simply if you try to find uh, ill conditioning that uh, we call it condition condition number uh, we can identify it through condition number so what is condition number it is the just ratio of the uh, highest value uh, highest eigen value uh, with least eigen value of hessian of the uh, given function at that point just you have to find the hessian as a matrix 2 by 2 matrix and then find eigen values uh, find the ratio of highest eigen value with least and that would talk about uh, uh, condition number if condition number is very high problem would be ill condition if condition number that means uh, conversion time is very high it will take longer number of iteration to converge to optimal point okay and if condition number is low then method will converge very fast so no worry if that situation is coming then there are techniques that polyac and nastro come up with momentum scheme so this momentum scheme it is just uh, uh, what accelerating the gradient descent method it accelerate it so what is happening that we bring momentum from the history here so this vt we are calling it uh, velocity component so it bring momentum from the history in that process our algorithm become much faster so one algorithm this algorithm is proposed by polyak okay it is just ca calling it momentum we are trying to find gradient at point uh, gt current point gt or gk you can call it gk and there is one more uh, scheme it is proposed by nestro nestro is finding uh, gradient not at current point theta k it is finding current point theta k plus mu times the velocity so this one is more accelerated one that means path is same it is all about acceleration how much of a speed you are taking in order to go to optimal point in order to find the optimal point so here gradient descent that if you apply gradient descent number of iteration is taking 10,000. if you are applying polyac number of iteration it will fall to five uh, 500 or something like that but if you are applying nestro or uh, scheme then uh, the number of iteration it will fall to 100 something like that so it is all about acceleration how much fast you are in order to achieve the optimal points all about those scheme are coming okay so geometrically you can visualize all these scheme like this way 
and i have already implemented this result so due to this uh, momentum scheme you can see easily see now if you talk about uh, without momentum without momentum oscillation is there so definitely due to oscillation uh, the yield posed problem taking higher number of iteration to uh, converge to optimal point but once we apply momentum technique you can see that your acceleration has been <laughs> that uh, the rate of converging to the optimal point has been increased you are taking very less iteration to come to optimal point so those are the scheme those are scheme also we will discuss in detail okay so now coming to any question till now no anyone is having any question you can ask otherwise i am going forward uh, i will talk about course goal okay so uh, what is the course goal to provide with this uh, you will have an overview of convex optimizer problem so as i told that uh, if you talk about machine learning problem if you talk about control problem you, if you talk about system identification problem those happen to be implicit optimization problem simply i would like to say that so uh, from the implicit how you can convert into explicit optimization problem and once you are having absolute ex, explicit optimizer problem that one is the convex optimization optimization problem and we can solve that so that overview that uh, transformation process i will discuss in detail how to do that so that i also i will discuss okay then i will provide working knowledge on estimation detection problem so all all problem what were i discuss about machine learning control or system identification happens to be only two kind of problem either we do estimation or we do uh, detection signal detection uh, uh, we try to estimate parameter so those kind of things are there okay so in particular what is what is happening to provide with you a skill about how to recognize a convex optimization problem or convex optimization model and you will get a feel for easy and difficult convex is easy non convex is difficult if non convex is there no worry there is a uh, very interesting duality theory through which you can convert non convex to convex so that also i will talk that means from difficult to easy how you can come up with okay then uh, you have to come up with the algorithm which efficiently solve the problem so that efficient algorithm also will discuss which algorithm there are various algorithms which algorithm will be suitable where in in which what kind of problem so those things also will discuss in detail now coming to syllabus of this pro, uh, course so there are five module in this uh, course first module we will talk about overview of convex optimization problem including basic concept of convexity like convex set and convex function those are very in, uh, geometric in nature easy to understand and uh, it is providing a ultimate tool to solve convex optimization optimization problem so that's why module one is very important then we will talk in module two what is the optimality condition for a convex optimization problem various type of convex optimization problem okay so that in detail we will discuss that we will come up with various convex optimization problem and we have to talk about various optimality condition for those uh, convex optimization problem then in module three we will talk about duality concept through which why we are going for duality again it is one geometric concept so sometimes as i told that we come up with uh, difficult problem so how to convert difficult to easy so we have to apply duality so that's where duality problem is coming here duality concept is coming then we will talk about uh, various estimation and detection problem as an optimization problem in module 4 and in module 5 we will discuss about algorithmic approach various algorithm will discuss like uh, gradient descent uh, newton method like uh, various other uh, recent method like adams eta grade other things we will discuss in detail how to implement those things okay so this this one is the overview of syllabus um, th there would be only five module and all every module is very important now coming to class assessment there would be four exam two in which two quizzes would be there and two terms apart from various assignment and other things okay so if you talk about uh, uh, mass assessment then it is like 20 percent from assignment class participation or minor project something like it depends upon situation okay then 30 percent it would come from quizzes and assignment uh, okay 30 percent quizzes and then 25 percent it will come from midterm then 20 for that uh, here actually in end term it would be 40 percent in term it will go to 40 percent okay here it would be 15 percent so i will give a detailed mass assessment approach it is already there in google classroom i have already mentioned everything there and 
all these are assessment process it is uniform throughout my courses every whatever course i take uh, i am having the same approach okay and now if you talk about references then one classical references is uh, by a convex optimization by uh, stephen and boyd it is really a very interesting book from uh, uh, stanford university then there apart from that there are various other uh, good book on convex optimization you can 